Hey everybody, it's me, Grandmaster Ben Feingold. Who would have thunk it? This is the game of the day with chess.com. And um, today's game is from the Pro Chess League. It's, uh, I think, 10 minute with two second increment. Uh, Yu Yang Yi is white and Anton Korobov is black. Korobov, one of the top players in the Ukraine. And obviously Yu Yang Yi, one of the top players in China. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, played pretty theoretical game in a semi-slav. Um, of course, in this variation, white can play either e3 or bishop g5. Uh, in my opinion, bishop g5 is the way to go for a bigger advantage with white, although I've played them both. Um, I, I don't do well with e3. Anyway, <laughs> uh, okay, so e3 is just a normal you know, semi-slav. Um, here white can play, uh, Bishop D three, which was the main move for 50 years. And they, they play Queen C two also, obviously like one of the key ideas is black whose Bishop is bad on C eight wants to play D takes C four B five attacking the Bishop and then Bishop B seven. Well, if black's going to play D takes C four, which he almost always is, you don't want to move your bishop and then move your bishop again. You would like them to take with your bishop still on f1, so you do it in one move. So white tries to find some, you know, reasonable-looking moves before moving the bishop out. Okay, bishop d6. Uh, white played bishop e2. Of course, white can play bishop d3, which usually transposes. But this is more flexible for white because after it takes, he doesn't have to take back. Whereas after bishop d3, then bishop's attacks, you have to take back. So maybe after takes, white would play e4 quicker or try to take with the knight. But usually white just takes back anyway. So it usually just transposes. Okay, black castles, white castles. Finally, black takes on c4, plays b5. I think I had this position against Ray Robson about 10 years ago. I think it was this position. Okay, so everybody did what they wanted to do. And two things happen in this kind of game. Black plays c5, or black doesn't play c5. If black plays c5 and doesn't lose any material, nice bishop on b7. If black never plays c5, then that's a terrible bishop on b7. So the whole game revolves around whether black can play c5. Of course, black plays c5 in the near future, the b5 pawn is not defended. So usually black plays a6 first, or then plays c5, and white tries to stop black from playing c5. Now black doesn't have to play c5. Black can play for e5, since he has his knight and bishop defending e5, although that doesn't really solve the question of this bishop. Okay, so white played a3, which is fine. Maybe white's going to play b4 and try to stop c5 forever. Okay. Um, black played h6, which I'm not a fan of. And actually, um, there was a game in this line by Yu Yang Yi's countryman, Ding Ler In, um, against Sam Shankland, where um, in this position, instead of playing a3, uh, uh, Ding, Ding Ler In played another way. He played e4. This was in a blitz game. Um, and anyway, black eventually won the blitz game, but that's not indicative of the opening. Okay, now h6, I'm not a big fan of um, because, you know, loses a tempo and, you know, white, white's going to play either b4 or e4 or both. So I think, you know, black should be a little quicker. Black knows the opening better than I do and he probably figures there's no hurry. So, okay, rook d1. And um, when I'm playing a queen's gambit and I have white, different from this position, using my bishops on g5, and I'll keep my bishop on c1. You know, black is trying to play c5 or e5, as I indicated earlier. So it makes sense to have the rook on d1 to try to stop black from doing that, making it more difficult. Rook d1 is not the most you know common move because we don't really know when we want the rooks because we don't know if c5 is going to happen or e5 is going to happen or if e4 is going to happen. Where's this rook going to go? Should the rooks go on c1 and d1? Should the rooks go on d1 and e1? 
is the queen side going to get open and the rook is staying on a1? I don't know. So rook d1 is a little committal. It's not the most common move. Okay, queen c7. That's okay. It gets off the line of the rook. h3. Again, I don't think that's absolutely necessary, but it's a 10-minute game, and it's actually important to play quickly. And when chess.com asked me to do the game of the day for this game, you know, they said I should be a little lenient because this isn't like Tata Steel and the game takes five hours and every move is a fine tooth comb. It's a 10 minute game. So you're trying not to play bad, but play pretty good. So H3 is safe. That way you don't blunder the H pawn later if something happens. All right. And you get some lift for your king. You stop knight G4. All right. It might not be the engine's first move, but, it, you know, for a super GM, it's a good move. I play it quickly. doesn't give anything away. All right. And black still can't play C5 because the B5 pawn is hanging. So, all right. Um, A5 is not a move that I usually like because now instead of playing for C5, black is being more ambitious and he's going to play for B4 and then C5. Obviously, can't play c5 ever now because the b5 pawn is hanging. So instead of playing a6 and b and c5, as I said, he wants to play b4 and c5. Well, again, black's playing h6, losing a tempo sort of, and playing very slowly. So you can't always get everything when you're like building, building, building. Sometimes you just got to do it. So white played e4, trying to distract black from his plans. And like it or not, black is going to have to play the move e5. We can't let white play e5. So, well, now this idea of b4 and c5 seems like it's not going to happen. Okay, the engine says e5 is the best move. That's what he played. And here, <clears throat> white broke one of my rules. And since he's 250 points higher than me, I guess my rules don't matter to him. Um, White should develop a piece of bishop e3, then his rook can go to c1, and so on. Instead, white traded everything. And again, in a 10-minute game, if you don't make any mistakes losing material, it's very likely you'll win. Because, you know, your opponent and you were both going to play 90 moves and not lose material. So white's trying to play sort of safe and keep a small advantage, keep this bishop where it's not very strong. And trading a lot of pieces means that white's not going to make any blunders ever. It's not a good way to get the biggest advantage, but it's safe. Okay, so trading everything gives black equality. Um, now he plays bishop e3. So that's not making it that tough for black. Rook e8. The engine's not a big fan of rook e8, but I like rook e8. That's fine. Rook a c1. Now, here black made a bad move. His first actual bad move of the game. White has a threat that's relatively obvious if you're you know 2700 although it's not clear how important this threat is the reason white played rook c1 i mean the rook's better on c1 than a1 is maybe he's going to play knight takes b5 and you know he's attacking c7 a lot problem is e4 is really weak so if black just plays rook a d8 for example putting his rook in the middle and white does do this it doesn't give him any advantage because after all these trades where white has won a pawn, black now can take this pawn and the rook on d1 is not defended because of rook d8. So you can't, you can't start taking stuff because your rook on d1 is hanging. You'd have to play something like bishop e2, something like this. And the engine just says this is completely equal. Knight d5 with, you know, okay, the material is equal and pawn structure is equal and everything's equal. And this is one of those all zeros positions. So rook a d8 is, is the correct move. Um, and there's other moves that sort of keep equality, um, but he didn't define them. So in this position, instead of playing rook a d8, which it says everything is all zeros, the position is pretty equal. Instead, he followed up with his plan from earlier. This wasn't the time to follow up. He played b4. This is a very bad move because... Black wants to play c5 or trade everything. And this doesn't do either one. Now after the move knight a4, which you may think looks silly, why is the knight on a4? Well, 
That's pretty good knight, pretty good dark square control. And more importantly, the bishop on b7, it's, it's terrible. And now we have a backward c pawn. So we either keep our bishop on b7 the rest of the game behind the pawn, which sounds awful, or we re move the bishop somewhere else, which is what he did. And now the c6 pawn is a backward weak pawn. So b4 was a bad move. Now white has an advantage. Okay, forces the king to h1, and then he trades more pieces. And white says, all right, I'll trade pieces and leave you with this silly piece. Knight c5. And whenever you play a semi-slav with either color, and, and you see this, and you don't see the rest of the board, white's doing well. That's, that's not what black wants. Okay, and black has to play bishop c8, obviously. And that, that doesn't make any sense. So white has a nice advantage here. And he tried to make it even simpler. It seemed like Yu Yang Yi was interested in simplification and having a small advantage and having no losing chances. So he played queen d2. And black should probably trade queens and just accept the fact that his queen side pawns are weak and his bishop on c it's not good. And, you know, white has a nice advantage. But instead, black didn't want to, you know, trade queens and have no prospects. So you play queen h4, and he's playing, you know, very, very aggressively. If it works, then that's good. Okay, white played king to g1, getting out of this, you know, attack on his h-pawn, the pin and all that. Knight h5, always play bishop f1, knight f4. And the problem is, I mean, you know, black doesn't really have enough attacking here. It's White's perfectly well defended. And the idea of king h2 was to play the move g3, forking the queen and knight. If we if we play g3 here, we're just hanging the h-pawn. But now if we play g3, then we win a piece. So black played the best move, knight e6. And the engine says white just has a tiny advantage. And um, white played a little too aggressively on the king's side now, giving away most of his advantage. Um, you actually don't want to move these pawns. You just want to sit here and be calm. Make sure black has no threats and then, you know, put pressure on these pawns with an advantage. And instead, white decided I have a four to three advantage. Let's go. Now, I'm not going to say like that's bad, even if the engine does, because it's a 10 minute game and probably the players had like two or three minutes here. So if they're not hanging their queen, they're doing pretty well. I'm getting ahead of myself here. OK, so G3, um, queen F6. And now the engine says it's just equal because white's sort of weakening his own king. Um, it doesn't like bishop g2 very much. The, the engine prefers like more simplification. Taking on a3 is, again, not, not an engine move because you're giving yourself two isolated pawns. The engine just wants to play rook d8, and, it's, and then we have control of the d4 square, and black's perfectly fine. This move, now black has two isolated pawns, so that's not ideal. Rook b8, that's okay. White retreated, but he wants to take the c pawn. And he wants to take the a pawn. Knight d4, black's getting aggressive. And now, uh, black could play knight e6 and repeat. Probably white wouldn't repeat then, but black just played knight b3, trading more pieces. And this is about equal. I'd probably rather have white, because black has more isolated pawns. E5 is a, is a very strong move. And now we're opening up our bishop. So we really got some, you know, the bishop wasn't doing much with the pawn on E4. Now it's open up the diagonal. Now, obviously, if you take with the queen, rook E1 is a skewer. You can't, you, know, you can't do that. If you take with the rook, then queen to the back rank check wins the bishop on C8. So the pawn is poisoned, plus we open up our bishop a lot. So he plays the best move, queen f5. He's keeping you know, tabs on these pawns. A lot of weak white pawns, too. Um, f4. And the engine actually wants to play king g1 defending the f pawn, which is funny. Um, that way the queen can run around. f4 seems very logical. g3, e5, f4. You get your pawns going. And now I assume, and I wasn't watching the game live, but if I'm playing a 10-minute game, and both players are 2,700, and it's move 34, we don't have any time on our clock. That's, that's what's going to happen. So the players have to play quickly. 
The engine says it's about equal if black plays either h5 or g5 and plays on the king side. But instead, black wanted to play on the queen side because a pawn is a pawn is a pawn. So he took the pawn on a3, defending his a5 pawn. All right. g4. Queen has to retreat. Um, rook a1 is okay. And now black should actually trade rooks, but he didn't want to give up the a-file and have this pawn that's obviously going to be lost. So he played queen b3. And this is a mistake because after the trade, the queen is no longer defending the c6 pawn, which it was doing on e6. So he took the c6 pawn. Now, I think he saw that, but I mean, you don't want to play rook f8. That's not your goal. Your rook's not good on f8. It's very passive, but you have to play rook f8. Um, if you move to e7 or e6, queen check wins the bishop on, on c8. Okay. And white play queen d6. Excellent move. And unfortunately, the game ended in a blunder here. <clears throat> the game was actually relatively well played, considering it was a 10-minute game. I don't think if it was like a super GM tournament where the game took five hours, the players would be super proud of their play. But in a 10-minute game, that's a pretty good game. Nobody blundered any material. Most of their moves were excellent. Most of their moves were the best. Pretty good game. And in this position, Black blundered because he missed what White was doing. Black has two possible moves that don't lose right away. You can't trade queens because after pawn takes, that pawn's too strong. That pass d-pawn. You have to play queen b4 or you have to play queen b2 check followed by queen b6. Those are the only ways to continue, but Korobov missed, missed the threat. So the game ended right now. And that's what happens in 10-minute games. Don't blunder, don't blunder, don't blunder, and wait for the blunder. And against 95% of people, that's, that's going to work. And even though these guys are the best in the world, it still works because it's a 10-minute game. I mean, that, that's what happens. Uh, he played queen b3, and this is... This is going right to your next um, puzzle rush uh, and, and, and tactics trainer and puzzle battle. If you do any of that, you're going to see this tactic all the time. Okay, so white's a play and win. And if you, if you do puzzle rush a lot and you, and you score well, this is pretty easy. Um, I would probably pause the video now if you can't find it and try to find it. Uh, the answer is the only move that's a check and a capture. That's the first move you should look at, queen f8 check. And obviously Korobov immediately realized what he did and resigned. If he takes the queen, and I've actually seen this in, in Puzzle Rush, I've seen this, this mate before in more than one setting. And if he doesn't take, obviously he's down a rook if he goes here, but the engine st still announces checkmate here. Black doesn't have perpetual, so when black checks, then... It's going to get mated. And he's down a rook. So the game ended very abruptly there. Now, I want to explain to the audience before the video ends, if you check and then play queen b6, which is one of the engine suggestions, this mate doesn't work because the queen on b6 is defending d8. That's the point of queen b6. So then then doesn't work. So queen b2, queen b6, the game still continues. Queen b4, the game still continues with white having a big advantage, obviously that's that's not very aggressive for black. Black can't move anything. Um, and the engine says white can just pick up this pawn and white, or, well, rook, rook b1. And white, white has excellent winning chances. So probably best was queen b2 and queen b6. So the game ended abruptly. Queen takes f8 and black black had to resign. So that was uh, Yu Yang Yi's win against um, uh, Anton Korobov in the Pro Chess League. That was the game of the day here at chess.com. Uh, look for more chess.com videos from me, Grandmaster Ben Feingold, and you can click on further videos by clicking on the screen now and seeing more game of the day and more chess.com videos. Bye, everybody.